In the two years since the RTX 4000 series launched, Nvidia has gone from being the leading GPU maker, whose chips were used for crushing benchmarks and mining crypto, to being one of the most valuable companies in the world, largely off the back of the current AI boom. If you're like me though, gaming GPUs are still the first thing that comes to mind when you see that green swirly eyeball logo. And so, a quarter century on from the launch of the first GeForce graphics card, it'll soon be time for the new RTX 5000 series to push performance to new heights. So let's jump into what we know so far about Nvidia's next-gen GPUs for 2025 and beyond. So the RTX 5000 series should be built on Nvidia's next-gen Blackwell microarchitecture, named after the mathematician David Blackwell. Blackwell the human was a pioneer in many mathematical fields which have influenced the design of AI models, an obvious nod to the importance of AI to the future of Nvidia. Blackwell the microarchitecture powers Nvidia's latest data center GPUs, as well as its upcoming RTX 5000 series cards. Worth noting that so far Nvidia has only really talked about Blackwell in the context of it being used in those data center GPUs. Nevertheless, we can use some of the information out there to kind of squint and see how it'll apply to the upcoming consumer graphics cards as well. Blackwell as we know it today is built on a custom 4NP node from Taiwanese chip manufacturing giant TSMC, an enhanced custom version of the 4N process used for RTX 4000 series. Those are both 5 nanometer processors, and so Blackwell doesn't benefit from the effectively free power and efficiency savings that would apply moving to a smaller process node like TSMC's 3 nanometer, for example. If the consumer GPUs are built on the same 4NP process, the next gen GeForce cards would need to mostly rely on the new microarchitecture itself for improvements to performance and efficiency. But the word if is key there. It seems likely, based on what we know so far, but it's not guaranteed. Nvidia could still surprise us with new RTX GPUs built on TSMC's 3 nanometer node. As for the various GPU models said to be included in the 5000 series, codenames ranging from GB202 and GB203 for the RTX 5090 and 5080 respectively have been doing the rounds, in addition to GB205, 206 and 207 for mid-tier and entry-level cards. Though the 207 has also been tipped as being a potential laptop version. Various online leaks also point to the entire series supporting new GDDR7 memory for additional bandwidth as well as latency and power efficiency gains. Now, piecing together the specs for the two higher-end cards in particular has, until now, involved a lot of poring over unconfirmed details online. But the most recent, likely most reliable info we have comes from Twitter leaker Copite7Kimmy, who has a decent track record with this sort of thing. The headline specs point to the RTX 5090 packing absolutely beastly specs, with over 21,000 CUDA cores, 32 gigs of GDDR7, and a hefty 512-bit bus. And with a TDP reportedly standing at 600 watts, you'll definitely want to invest in a beefy power supply to run this card. The 5080 effectively chops many of those figures in half, just over 10,500 CUDA cores and 16 gigs of GDDR7 with a 256-bit bus, plus a TDP that's a more reasonable 400 watts, but still a significant bump over the 320 watt typical power draw of the 4080. So when we're looking at the delta between 5080 and 5090 based on these leaked specs, we can see Nvidia's ultra high-end card really pulling away from the more mainstream performance option in terms of compute cores, memory, and of course power, much more so than was the case in 2022 with the two top-end cards in the 4000 series. Although admittedly we won't have a complete picture until we have a fuller spec sheet with further details like clock speeds. The best information out there on performance for these upcoming GPUs comes from Red Gaming Tech on YouTube, who cites a previously reliable source claiming an approximately 48% bump in performance going from 4090 to 5090, or 29% from 4080 Super to 5080, as well as a more modest 25% bump from 4070 Super to 5070. But he also says he's not aware of whether these numbers provided by his source are in a particular benchmarking app or an average of certain benchmarks or games. They're also believed to be pure raster numbers, so performance figures before taking into account DLSS or anything like that. If you've ever used DLSS, you know it can make a big performance difference in certain titles. So although these are seemingly quite precise numbers, what they actually mean is a little harder to pin down. Nevertheless, it does jive with the idea of big performance boosts at the high end and less so further down the pecking order. Speaking of which, much less is known about the mid-tier and entry-level 5000 series GPUs at the moment, with most of the numbers being posited online being based on educated guesses. 
So if you're looking for a potential upgrade from say a 3060, you'll probably want to wait and see whether the mid-level GPUs in this range, like the codenamed GB205 or GB206, actually end up being worth it. But the RTX 5090 with its 21,000 CUDA cores and 600 watt TDP might not even be Nvidia's most ridiculous consumer graphics card this generation. Rumors have swirled online over the past few months of an even higher-end Blackwell card in the form of an NVIDIA Titan AI. Copi7 apparently confirmed the existence of this thing back in July, and performance figures during the rounds point to the Titan AI being 10% faster than even the RTX 5090, or 63% quicker than the 4090. The NVIDIA Titan AI is believed to be based on the same Blackwell GB202 GPU as the 5090, likely with even more CUDA cores enabled, and more RAM for truly ludicrous levels of performance. As the name suggests, artificial intelligence applications would be just as much of the focus for this card as gaming. Though naturally it would also mean this card, if it's actually released, replacing the 5090 as the baller money no object option for the absolute highest performance PC gaming available in 2025. The only question is whether Nvidia will actually release this insanely specky iteration of Blackwell at retail. Copine 7 previously revealed that a Titan card based on the previous Ada Lovelace microarchitecture was developed but never put up for sale. Not a lot is known about Nvidia's next-gen laptop GPUs at this point, with the only really noteworthy leak coming from Taiwanese notebook vendor Clevo, which manufactures its own computers in addition to ODMing for some of the bigger brands. Leaked slides from over the summer point to six RTX 50 series mobile variants launching in 2025, with more configurations with 16 gigs of RAM compared to the previous gen and obviously GDDR7 in tow. There also appear to be no 6 GB variants of the new laptop GPUs planned, as the roadmap shows only 8 GB variants of the mid-tier cards likely to come to market as RTX 5050 or 5060. The RTX 5000 series had been widely rumored to break cover sometime towards the end of 2024, however more recent leaks have presented early 2025 as the more probable launch window, likely at the CES show in Las Vegas where Nvidia usually has a sizable presence. Various boards with the new GPUs purportedly entered testing in labs in India and the US as of late July according to reports from Guru3D, meanwhile reports from Taiwanese publication Benchlife point to the finalization of the card's designs taking place by September, which would broadly line up with the very early 2025 launch. Pricing is a bit of a mystery at the moment, and since Nvidia is almost unchallenged in the very high-end gaming GPU space, we'd expect the 5090 and the Titan AI, if it exists, to push ever closer and pass even beyond that eye-watering $2,000 mark. There's still a lot we don't know about Nvidia's next-gen graphics cards though. Could the company surprise us with Blackwell manufactured on TSMC's 3nm node? And what about things like DLSS 4? What has Nvidia been up to in this area over the past couple of years to build on its already excellent AI upscaling tech in these new GPUs? Nvidia CEO Jensen Huang clearly has high ambitions for future versions of this tech, being able to conjure up textures, objects, and even background characters in some games, which would be pretty wild. So be sure to share your hopes for these next-gen GeForce GPUs down in the comments and subscribe for more PC hardware coverage in the near future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.